Grand Harbour Malta, reckoned to be the finest natural harbour in Europe. Part of an island fortress which for 2,000 years has been attacked, besieged, defended because of its strategic position set in the centre of the Mediterranean. Today, the British naval base has been run down and Malta is turning the island with all its natural advantages into one of the world's playgrounds. Britain, to which Malta has been linked for so many years, has come even closer since independence in 1964. By jet airliner, London is only three hours away. Less than 30 years ago, these skies were far from peaceful. German Stuka bombers kept up a ceaseless attack on Allied convoys carrying vital supplies to the armies in North Africa. The George Cross, which King George VI awarded to Malta, is not the only reminder of that savage air onslaught. Beneath these calm waters, there still lurks a legacy of war. And here, as in other parts of the world, the Royal Navy fights an underwater menace. Under this marker boy, a British destroyer loaded with explosives lies rusting on the seabed. She was sunk in 1941. A diving flag is run up to warn all ships to keep clear and reduce speed. Over the side go skin divers of the Royal Navy's Explosive Ordnance Disposal Unit for a dive down to 80 feet. The natural hazards of underwater swimming are just a prelude to the job. And the job is to deal with close on 100 tons of bombs and shells which have become increasingly unstable and therefore more dangerous over the years. The divers work in teams and they are linked to the surface by phone. They can't take off their masks and so they have to use a specially designed bone conductor microphone placed behind the ear for talking and hearing. To get at the explosives in the ship's magazine, an entry has to be cut through this steel plated hull. But first the barnacles which have collected over the years have to be removed. A tough job that cuts hands and rubber suits. Circus diver! I'm afraid we've had a bit of trouble with these barnacles, but we've managed to clear a decent patch now. Can you send the torch down, please? The cutting torch has to be put into the water within five seconds of being lit, otherwise the intense heat of the oxygen-hydrogen flame would melt the head. And now it will take half an hour to cut a four foot square hole in the inch thick metal. More pressure is called for to blow the water from around the torch flame and keep it alight. That's right. So the boss gets ready to dive. He's a lieutenant commander responsible for a team which includes a chief petty officer and nine divers. Most of them are in their early 20s. All get extra pay, all are volunteers. The breathing apparatus they wear is non-magnetic and non-acoustic. If it wasn't, they might blow themselves up. The commander lowers himself into the darkness of the ship's interior to check the position of the ammunition.
a signal is flown to warn other ships to proceed with caution. Lowering a bomb to the explosive below may seem like taking coals to Newcastle, but the simplest and quickest way of destroying bombs is to blow them up with another bomb. Down it goes into the destroyer's magazine. Plastic explosive is brought down by the officer to attach to the bomb. Meanwhile, a cable is run out to connect it to a detonator on the surface. When the detonator is fired, the cable will burn instantly to explode the bomb. This is a graveyard of ships. During the Second World War, 16 British warships were sunk in and around Grand Harbour. Working on the seabed, often in poor visibility, calls for steady nerves and stamina. Always present is the risk of deteriorating explosives that could go off at any moment. These divers can stay down for 90 minutes at a depth of 80 feet. But now is the time for them to get back to the surface. As the diving vessel takes the team out of the danger area, the commander and the chief petty officer are left to fire the detonator. The engine of their inflatable boat is started first, then the short surface fuse is lit. This leaves them 60 seconds to get clear. The sunken destroyer was believed to contain over 2,000 explosives, ranging from 4-inch shells to 4,000-pound bombs. Some of these have been thrown out by the explosion without going off. They have to be collected and are placed on a charge on the seabed to be fired altogether. It would be a difficult enough job to perform on land. Unexploded bombs are dealt with separately. Once again, the officer places the charges. No matter how much training a man may have had for this job, it still remains a tricky operation. Now, all is set for another bomb to be cleared. same as before. The work of clearing Malta's Grand Harbour of the debris of war has been a long one, but the Navy divers are in sight of the end, and when they've done, they will be off to other ports carrying on with the job of making the waters safe. <laughs> 